Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Diane here. Hope everyone's well and happy. I think we've gone back into winter here. It was sunny for two days and now we've gone back into what feels like March. So I'm trying to cheer myself up with uh, thoughts of the seaside today. And also I want to share with you primarily is the reason for doing this painting. Um, this set of paints here, which um, you will already have heard about by this company called Meaden. And this is um, my, let's move that a bit. This is my layout on a palette, which I happen to have. And I put one of each color in each of these separate sections in order, in the order I prefer them to be in. And um, this is how I have them when I'm painting with them uh, if I don't know what colours I'm going to use. So I have all of this and then I can mix in the middle and so on. So that's quite nice for the studio when I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do and I just want to play. Um, so I thought I'd show you that first because um, the set that, uh, that I'm using comes in this box. This is the paints and they're in tubes. And they're in nice big tubes uh, that you can actually see what they are. It's written in big writing, tells you what the pigment is, tells you the transparency and so on. Although most of the time, basically, I don't care about that at all. I just use the paint. And the great thing about this is that if you, do you know what? If you paint, it just suddenly occurred to me. I, I, I have a couple of grandchildren. I've got two grandsons, but I never see them. Um, but if I did, then I would try to encourage them to paint. Um... And if I was going to try to encourage them to paint, I would want them to use good paint that wasn't going to disappoint. And I would want them to use inexpensive paint so as not to break the bank. This is absolutely perfect for that. So if you want to paint along with your grandkids, I would honestly suggest that to take away all the grief about, oh, don't waste the paint, use up what's on your palette. Or, you know, don't rinse up your brush until you're sure you're finished. Or don't pick up so much paint because it's very expensive. You don't have to worry about any of that. Not that anybody would say any of those things, of course. Um, but this would be absolutely perfect because it has good, strong colours. It's totally safe. It's vegan. It's uh, cheap. Really inexpensive. That 24 set, if you use the discount that... Um, you can get if you type in, when you go to their website, you type in Diane 10, you get another 10% off. Shipping is free. This set of paints is $15. Can you believe that? Well, I can't. So I'm going to use it. And today I've painted a little, this is, this is a miniature bookmark. This is my trial piece. Um, obviously it's not miniature, it's giant, but I'm going to do them smaller than that. And we're going to do a water's edge painting. So this is obviously uh, just a trial. You can see uh, Tamsin said that would work for a bookmark for a coffee table book, wouldn't it? So yes, <laughs> I thought that was quite a good idea. So here we have a block of Meaden watercolour paper. It says it's 100% cotton. There are 20 sheets in here. And with the discount, this is $15 also. Uh, I have used it already a couple of times. And uh, I did a video which you might have seen yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, trying it out. And that was one of the paintings that I did for that. And this was another, I can't see the other one. This was another one that I did for that. And just to show you how absolutely vibrant and bright these colours are. This is another one and I did this one because I wanted to test the yellows because with cheap sets of paints very often it's the yellows that let you down and on this one, this paint, there's nothing wrong with these yellows. Look how bright they are. Completely vibrant, just as good as any paint I've ever used. Honestly, I mean I'm not kidding. <laughs> I really am not. 
joking. This one with the blues, I think it's possible that the blues, and I'm not going to say anything yet until I painted the seaside one. I can't remember now, I did it wet in wet, and I think the blues have faded back a little bit, but that might just be because I didn't use enough paint. So we'll be trying this kind of technique again soon to see. I don't want to make any uh, premature judgments on that one. And this one was the first thing I painted, and I was a bit worried about the paper at that time. It was the first sheet in the book, in the block, and I don't know whether sometimes the first sheet isn't as good as the following sheets. I did notice that actually with, um, with the etcher block too. I think the first sheet was a bit rubbish, but I don't know why that would be. It shouldn't be. But anyway, it's fine. So I've taken, oh, and materials. I've got uh, equipment rather, a couple of round brushes. I think this is a seven and uh, a five, no, two sevens, so they're slightly different. This is draw well brushes. You can get them from Japan. You know all about that. They come from Japan, from Mr. Mayama. He's very happy about your existence and my existence. <laughs> I think we've improved his turnover quite a bit over the last year, which is quite funny. He charges $30 for shipping. He deals with all the paperwork and anything, if there is any, to come to a different country. And um, he says they are rock bottom prices, because I asked him yesterday whether he would give um, free shipping if people ordered a lot, and he normally doesn't. I know one lady did get free shipping, and I think that must have been a mistake. Um, lucky you. But um, $30, he says, is below what most people charge for shipping. But the price of the brushes is just uh, insane. It's, it's pennies, basically, for the brushes, and they are very good. So don't hesitate. If you feel like you need some new brushes, go ahead and get them from him. That's good. Uh, this is a palette that I have selected the colours I'm going to use from my tubes, and I've put them out in this palette. Again, this is another Meden piece of um, equipment, the round palette. It is works out at $12.60 if you buy it from their website with my code and um, it's great because it's got like 12 spaces one two three four five another five and two and those two in the middle you can use for mixing if you put out your colors on the outside and I've selected here um, the, the four blues which are in the kit that's cerulean cobalt ultramarine and phthalo blue and uh, there's some white here, which I'm going to try for the foam at the edge of the sea. If that doesn't work, I'll use this, the um, uh, gouache, white gouache. This one is, I don't know what make that is, but you can get white gouache from all sorts of places. And then I've got yellow ochre for the sand and um, burnt sienna for making the browns, if I want browns for some of the seashells that we're going to do. So that can do there. I've got another little... Meden palette palette to look here for black and white on it as well from before and I've taped off um, the bookmark sections here using some thin washi tape and we're going to start painting over that washi tape and I'm pressing it down because I'm hoping that it's not going to lift when I start to paint. I'm making these quite small these paint these uh what do you call them, bookmarks, quite small, because the paper is perhaps a little bit smaller than I would usually use. I'd normally use A4 size for this, but this is only uh, basically 10 by 7 rather than sort of 8 by 10. Um, or in England, even a little bit bigger, uh, 20 by 30 centimetres. But that's big enough for a bookmark, especially if you only read little books. So let's get started. Um, I'm not going to do this wet and wet, we're going to do this wet on dry and we're going to use all four of the blues to do the sea and then we're going to use the yellow ochre to do the sand and I'm just pondering as to whether or not this brush is going to be big enough. I think I might possibly switch to a slightly bigger one. Uh, no, I haven't slowed down the video. Have I, should I? Shouldn't I? I'm going to use a number eight. I'm going to use a number eight and I'm going to pick up phthalo blue. And when you pick up paint and you're going to paint from a palette uh, like this, always sort of give it a little bit of a work over. Work it out. 
in 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 one of your working areas, whether it's the big working area in the middle of the palette, or whether it's a little working area like this, which would be fine. You can always clean it. Um, you don't have to do as much as I'm doing. I'm just wasting time while I'm talking. Uh, but then just 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 do that, and then come in with your paint across the top. And you want what you're going to want is you're going to want all of these to be a little different from each other, aren't you? You don't want them to all be exactly identical and they won't be, trust me. So you could add a little bit of black to this if you wanted to make it a little bit darker. So you could mix a little bit of black in just for the top and just let that sort of blend down a bit if you if you felt that that blue was a little bit too um, excited about being blue. And just don't fiddle with it too much. Try and go to the edge so you've got a nice edge going down. And then we could swap now to the ultramarine, pick up some paint, give it a bit of a workout, maybe mix it in a little bit with, with um, what's already in your palette and then just dance across the paper. And at this point, you, I heartily recommend that at this point, you try to let go of expectations. OK, because if you start to expect that something is going to turn out like something at this point, it probably won't. It won't live up to your imagination. You have in your head an idea and um, you probably won't get there. But allow it, please, to be the moment where you just let, to a certain extent, serendipity take over. So now I'm bringing in the cobalt blue. And we're just going to put a row of that. I've done exactly the same thing. And don't paint like you're painting a wall, please. Just allow the brush to dance a little bit. That's, that's my advice. Take it or leave it, but there it is. Okay, and then for the the final blue, we're going to go for the last and only other option, which is cerulean, which is actually a nice turquoise colour. And we're just splashing that in and letting it blend a bit. And this is a good test, good test of the paper because uh, we're, we're not getting any any adverse reactions here. I'm not getting any any pilling, although I haven't really rubbed it, so you wouldn't expect to. The first coat is usually pretty accommodating. Um, and it seems to be blending fine. So now I'm going to pick up some uh, yellow ochre and I'm going to start from down the bottom and I'm going to do each one separately. I just decided this as I got here. I'm going to do each one separately because I want it to blend in when it hits here. I want it to actually join and make a sort of greenish thing going on here. Okay, and if I do them all at once, I probably won't get the same effect. I want it to be darker at the bottom. And then we'll go up. And again, this is a good test of the paper. Is it going to allow the paint to blend? And I, I would say, yes, it seems reasonable. Trying different methods as I'm going along here, just slightly altering the way I'm doing it. Because as you, um, as you practice, because I haven't done this once, uh, as you practice, you will find different ways. And you can soften that line. It's allowing me to soften it and allowing that to flow down. So each one of these bookmarks will be unique and different from the one next to it, even though we did the tops all in one go. So just break that up by rubbing a little bit with the brush. Again, no pilling, so we're fine. And we want this to be sort of greenish where the water goes over the sand. So there we are, that's, that's that. And now what we have to do is let it dry. 
and then we'll come back and turn it into water and sand. Okay, so that's now dry. And the first thing I'm going to do next is I'm just going to mix up a little bit of a sort of reddish uh, brown using some of this black with some burnt sienna. And then I'm just going to spray a little bit onto the sand here to indicate some texture of the sand. So it doesn't look quite so blank. Then I need to wash that brush out a bit. Oops, that comes through Lottie. When she walks across the floor, we've got a sort of wooden sprung floor and it's a bit bouncy. So when she or my husband walks into the studio, everything, including this wonderful flexible arm that we have our camera on, everything bounces. So I apologize for that. Don't want to make you seasick. It's not my intention. So now I'm just picking up some white this is from the set. This is just the white paint that comes with the set. And then I'm going to spray a little bit of that on too in the bottom here. And then also a little bit in the water. So to just kind of indicate the idea of bubbles. When that dries, that will dry down a little bit lighter than it appears at the moment because white always does die back a bit. And then the next thing to do in this process is to pick up some white. Now this is a genuine first time for me. I hadn't done this effect before using this paint, but it looks quite good. It looks quite thick and I think it's probably going to be okay. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to indicate the idea of a line of wave going across across the edge here. We're going to do a couple of these. They don't have to join up because they're not going to be joined up when it's finished. And they don't have to be all the same size or indeed even done in the same way. You can do it sort of more bigger kind of thing. You can do it smaller, however you want. But you do want it to be sort of a little bit irregular with some blue showing through. And, uh, and then we'll do another one underneath here, using the paint pretty thick. Those of you who live near the sea will be doing this much better than me. So we we'll just, and then after, once we've done this stage, we're gonna come back and do some shadow on the, along the edges of these wavelets. And that, that hopefully will make them look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so that's that. And then for the shadow, we want the same uh, raw sienna that we used before, but we'll just put a little bit of um, what should we put in there? A little bit of ultramarine, just, just a little bit to make it a little darker. And then it wants to be fairly loose. And then we just paint a shadow along the bottom edge. Like that. I'm going to try and sort of make it disappear a little bit. And then it needs to be here as well. And then perhaps a little bit more blue for the one at the back where it's under the water. And if you, if you don't think that it's dark enough, which it might not be once it's dry, you can just go back and go over it a little bit. And then sometimes it's, it's quite nice to sort of go in and, and sort of break the line a little bit, but I think I would probably wait until it was dry before I did that. And you might see straight away that 
you haven't got quite enough white. So you can add some more white. And if you do have um, Dr. Martin, Martin's, um, PH Martin's um, bleed proof white, you might try that because that's probably better than just this white. This is mixing white really, it's not meant for, uh, it's not meant to be a bleed proof white particularly, I don't think, or it's not gouache either. So anyway, so that will do for now. And like I say, that can be touched up if it's not white enough for you. It can be touched up later. And then basically, what I think is a nice thing to do now is to take a, a bit of a smaller brush and you can play it this for hours, can't you, you know? So we're going to take some burnt sienna, I think, mixed with a little bit of uh, raw ochre and let's paint in a starfish on the seaside, on the beach. The sand is what I was trying to say. So I paint in a starfish. And when that's dry, we can put in some markings on it and some shadow as well. And we can also, using probably a similar color, perhaps, perhaps change it slightly with a bit of blue, we can put in some shells, you know, we can put in some, some shells like that, that kind of shape of shell. Perhaps. Or we could put in, um, Uh, what do you call them, um, those sea anemones, which are nice and easy to do because they're just basically round. So you can do lots of that and whatever you fancy doing. Then I think I would probably be inclined, hopefully, to be able to do the dots on the, on the starfish and on the see an enemy with white gel pen. If you haven't got white gel pen, then you just need to use a brush and just use the tip with a bit of your white paint. Or you can do the markings in a different color if you want in using a pen. You could give him, you know, lines like that. This one might want to, that's not really working very well. I need a better brown. Um, should be working. I think it's probably just because it's... But anyway, that'll do. Uh, oh, you could use black. Oh, I know. What am I doing? I'm not thinking. This is the sepia I was thinking of. Could come in and do some lines on our shells, for example and uh, we could outline if we wanted to do lines coming like this. Then of course it needs a little bit of shadow underneath. So we'll just put some shadow underneath. Almost any color will do for that. You could use green or you could use brown or you could use blue. We could use grey, whatever. Just a bit of shadow underneath like that. And then you can see that the white has died back a lot, but it's given a sort of, uh, it has given a kind of effect. And if you wanted to, another thing that you could do, you could um, put in some, uh, some fish swimming in the water. And this is where you would be a little bit whimsical because you wouldn't necessarily see the fish very well but you could, you could put in some fish or sea turtles just swimming in the water there like that. And you could decorate them as well if you wanted. So you've got all sorts of options for what 
you could do. I'm not going to do them all, um, but I think I might leave it at that, I think. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take off the tape of these ones at the end here so that we can see how they look. And then um, we can tell whether we need to do any more changes. It's best when you're pulling off the masking tape to pull it at 90 degrees like that. It tends to not tear so easily. So we just pull it at 90 degrees like that and carefully. And this one as well has got to come off. There we are. And can I get hold of that? Yes, it's right down there. This hasn't been one of those days when I've been really chatty uh, in the sense of talking about completely irrelevant things like exploding rockets and oops, uh, mini skirts and stuff. I did look up about the paper dresses though and uh, found out what that was all about. Bow Walter Scott having paper dresses as a promotional thing and then finding they became fashionable. Oh, <laughs> whatever next. So there we are, there are two done, and these ones are yet to be done. You can put the little fish in there all shadowy if you want. And um, I don't think that the, that the edge is too bad actually. You might want to fiddle with it a little bit more and put a little bit more white in, but uh, it doesn't look too bad at all to me. So I'm going to cut those two out and uh, then that will be the end of today's demonstration. So what I do want to say though, while I'm doing that, well, I will do it in a minute. I'm not going to do it while I'm talking. Um, don't forget to join us on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash studio and you'll find out that from $2.99 a month is the lowest membership. And that gives you exclusive membership of the, pa of the Facebook private members group, which we run on. We, I'm there all the time. I answer everybody's questions. I comment on their paintings. And we have a daily challenge that is me giving you a prompt every day so that you can do your own thing with what I suggest. And it's basically, I have told the story before. I'm sure you know um, all about this. I come into the studio every morning at about half past seven. I feed the dog and the cats. And then I sit down, I look at the messages that I get from you every day. Um, I try and answer as many of those as I possibly can. If I don't get through them all, then I'll um, come back to them later in the morning or even in the evening before I go to bed. Um, and then I do a little painting, um, a sketch or something, whatever comes into my head. And what I've decided to do is to share that with you on the Facebook page. It's a group, not a page. The Facebook group. You just have to apply once you've become a member of Patreon or a member of the YouTube membership as well. That works as well. You get a code which you enter into your application and as soon as I see that I join you to the group and then every day you can take that challenge and run with it, do whatever you like. And a lot of people have been producing the most fantastic things and usually it's something very simple that I give you like for example today is paint a page of stars and I've shown you a starry bookmark and um, some gold and silver stars and people come up with the most amazing things. And um, yeah, so, you know, a bookmark is an easy thing to do. So why not give it a try? Patreon or the YouTube membership. Some people have trouble getting through to the YouTube membership page. And if you can't do that, just go to patreon.com slash Anton studio and um, from $2.99 a month, like I say. And don't forget about the Meaden paints. Look how bright they are. Look how nice they are. What a wonderful thing to get a set of those to share with your grands. I don't think you could do better than that. So I'll let you go now. I bet you're fed up with hearing my voice and I'll see you again tomorrow or the day after. So have fun, everybody. Give this a try and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now. Bye bye, everyone. Lottie, say bye bye. Say bye-bye, Lottie. Lottie, say bye-bye.